Hey guys, and welcome to the second video about the word of Blake and the Jihad. Um, in the first video, we talked about sort of who they were in general, um, and you know the idea that they're, they're they're going off to to follow sort of the the ideology of of Jerome Blake and sort of his works. We found out who is Jerome Blake. You know what did he do? What was he responsible for? Uh, you know we heard about his message, the word of Blake that he sort of sent out about you know making sure that neutrality is preserved, that technology is preserved. He had other things that he said you know as well. Lots of philosophy that was published, and there's a lot of things that were were you know created by his his works so this one we're going to talk pretty much about what happens after they they split from comstar all the way to the, what happens to start the jihad right and then we'll do jihad in its own little video um so here we go With, without further ado we'll get cracking so as uh comstar forces were opening their vaults and they were tending to the clan threat so this is during the clan invasion remember right you know they've they've stopped stuff on uh on tharkad Sorry, on Tukiyid, and um, you know they, they've they've called that treaty, and they're getting ready to go and take the fight to the clans, and um, you know Operation what is it Task Force Serpent or whatever it is Operation Bulldog, all these things they're happening. So whilst they're distracted, you know, sort of in the the upper areas where the clan have been invading, word of Blake have headed south, right to to the Free Worlds League, and they're taking their time to infiltrate and spread their ranks to spread propaganda, to gain more followers. And using their influence within the Free Worlds League, the Blakists more or less take over control of the HPG administration for the entire faction, right? Um, it, it is important to remember that the Free Worlds League, it is the home of Jerome Blake, right? It is the home of Comstar. When it first was sort of created, um, you know, where all these mentalities are going, there's a lot of people who have political ties there. So um, this connection to the Blakists is is very important and that it spreads throughout their society and their culture as well and that's going to become important at the end of the jihad when everything has sort of you know hit the fan um you know but the the free worlds league are very uh, open to the blakists because they you've got to remember they're not they're not seeing the cynical side that we see they're not seeing the military side they're just seeing that you know uh the, the propaganda that 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 presentation that you know they're neutral they're trying to protect um, you know, the, the technology, things like that. <clears throat> so after this sort of happens, shortly after they start to get into the Compellent Confederation as well, they, they manage to weasel their way into there. Um, and they start using the incomes from these HPG stations, uh, to equip and train their forces, right? They're starting to get things ready. They, they slowly sending people different places. Blakists were very clever. They jumped at every opportunity to move their plot closer and closer to Terran recapture, right? Their end game is to own Terra uh, for themselves and basically supplant Comstar. Um, <clears throat> the the compelling Free Worlds League assault that went into the Sun of March sort of obfuscated their troop movements. It was able to hide. They were able to hide amongst those ships and sort of start spreading their people throughout the heart of the sphere. You know, they're getting closer and closer to Terra. Every little opportunity. They're not doing it at once. They're not taking any risks. They're just sneaking under the radar whilst other big bads are, are you know, causing problems. Later on, they're going to manipulate the sympathizers on Terra who are going to, you know, start to have some compassion for them and, and their sort of displacement in society. Um, and by doing that, they're going to end up being able to sort of, you know, get to people in key positions. So when they move their assault fleet into the system, uh, you know, the radars just conveniently happen to be switched off or looking the other way or whatever, right? And their final sort of strike is accomplished uh, when... Throughout the battles, they are, you know, they're attacking, and uh, one of the Comstar presentors, uh, Hetig, is he, he betrays Comstar and just flips the entire Titan naval yards over to the the Word of Blake forces, right, and just sort of starts giving them the ships where he was giving Comstar, you know, making the repairs for them, causing sabotage, uh, you know, all these sorts of things. So once they had a hold on Terra, it didn't take too long to, to get that. There was then an ongoing battle with Comstar, right? They're constantly fighting back and forth, back and forth, taking these key things. Um, but what ended up happening was the word of Blake had spread propaganda um, and they began to really invest the time in appearing to be supporting and protecting the locals, right? This might not have been the case, but that's what the propaganda machine was doing. So it showed, you know, that they were not just there as mech warriors 
mercenaries to take over the planet, but also helping rebuild it with their construction mechs and, and things like that. It wasn't just military supplies that were getting delivered to the planet, it was food supplies and medicines and things like that. And this created a new mythology amongst the people, you know, especially on those shattered core worlds where they've known nothing but violence and fighting. And so they start to develop these sympathizers, and that sort of shifts the battle. Uh, you know, the battles towards them and the Comstar forces start to feel like they're not even welcome on the planet anymore. Civilians start to take sides. Uh, it becomes a big deal. So, sorry, this dry mouth. This uh, this program brought to you by Pepsi Max. <laughs> In uh, 3064, Thomas Marrick no- uh, nominated Word of Blake for full Star League membership. So up until this point, They've not really been considered a serious faction, right? They're just sort of these crazy religious zealots that uh, are doing whatever. Um, and Thomas Marrick, who holds a lot of sway, you know, he he says you know, these guys they should be considered a nation state. We give the Comstar guys a nation state. These guys are now equaling them in numbers. They're equaling them in power. We should start to consider them and give them a voice on the Star League Council. And um, this changes the perception of them, right? Suddenly, they go from being this, uh, you know, th- this crazy group of nutters who who left Comstar to having some political uh, clout. You know, they have their own political sway, um, and so it, it starts to become the beginning, right, of, of Word of Blake holding its own political, unique political sway. Um, and in 3066, 20, uh, sorry, two years later, the Word of Blake Protectorate is sort of established within the Chaos March, right? And he says, they, they say, these are our planets. Now, the Chaos March is right next to Terra. They say, these are our, this, this is our, uh, you know, this is our, our nation, right? Um, and, and yeah, you should totally take us seriously. We're trying to make a nation. They start to build this idea that they're not just individuals who are within other nations, but they're a nation unto themselves. Now, Jamie Wolf, um, there's a whole other series of stuff on Jamie Wolf. you know, he's a guy. But, uh, yeah, he contested this formation actively. He kind of could see through the propaganda. He, you know, he had enough experience with them to know just exactly what their real plans were. And he, he was a strategist. He could work out exactly what was going on, right? Um, so he, he contested this formation very actively. Um, and within a year, um, the word of Blake sponsored an insurrection on outreach, right? They, they Jamie Wolf had caused enough problems for them that they're like, okay, we are going to pay other mercenaries to attack Outreach, which is a mercenary prime world, right? That's where all the mercenaries go to get their contracts. And if you've played Macquarie 4 Mercenaries, you know this. Uh, And um, the word of Blake, they deliberately chose Jamie Wolfe's longtime nemesis, Wayne Waco of the Waco Rangers, right? To lead these attacks, like as a personal insult to him. Uh, And knowing, knowing this... Uh, you know, that, that this would really offend him. They, they, they pressed that attack. They also knew that the Highlanders were going to come to the Wolf's Dragoon's aid because they had worked closely in the past. And also, you know, attacking Outreach is sort of attacking other people. And they foresaw that this was going to happen. So the word of Blake had predicted this. And they put naval forces which blockaded the homeworld of Northwind. So the, you know, the, the basically, you know, no trade was going to happen with Northwind. No ships were coming in and out. None of that and because they have such a strong naval naval force right they don't have the best mech force but they have a strong naval force you know they were able to to blockade that and also to really deal with um the deal with the the outreach themselves you know they started preparing for bombardment and attacking and things like that and we'll get to that shortly later in that same year um, which is 3067, if you're keeping track, the fourth Whiting Council conference uh, occurred. And when this happened, the Capellan Confederation, the Federated Sons, the Lyran Commonwealth, all said, we are not going to be part of the Star League anymore. We're, we're, we're bailing. Um, you know, so the Liao representative, Davy and Steiner, they all like, no, nah, we're We're done. We're done. The Russell Hug representative, who was, um, you know, he, he was going for a, a bit of a political play here, right? He said, 
I'm going to call for a vote of no confidence in the ability of the Star League to govern without these key players, right? And his goal, his intent, was to force the dissensionists to remain within the league. You know, that if he said, we should vote, no one's going to be confident in the Star League's ability to maintain control if you guys leave. Um, and if this is yes, then the idea is that they would then sort of be forced to politically realign themselves with the Star League um, rather than dedicate to to war right and uh instead of what happening was everyone said no no whatever that's fine let them go (laughs) and (laughs) so uh it sort of flipped on him it's like oh okay (laughs) you know and as a result the league then completely disintegrated now this is very key to the 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 blakists because they were they were ready to join the Star League, and that's a big part of their political play, right? Now, the Blakist followers had bought into the mythology, right? So you've got to remember, there's there's sort of two levels. You have the, the command, the people who are in charge of the movement, and then you have the public and everyone who's buying into this. And the public equals the, the military, the forces that are working there, right? Now, that part of the Blakist propaganda machine is that they're selling this idea of this religion this mythology that you know we have a prophecy and this one day we'll be returning to terror our homeland and this is going to happen and blah 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 what ends up happening is uh that because people are bought into that a key part of that was that it foretold that they would become a power through the star league so they were putting all their forces and all their effort into making that become a thing um, you know, and the political leaders of the faction had manipulated the point of view of the public to really significantly reflect this, that the call for them to join the Star League was, you know, a sign that they were finally about to reach their promised land. They were finally about to come to an era of peace and neutrality. And, um, you know, it was exactly as Jerome Blake had foretold. And um, so people were really bought into this idea. And then for the Star League to just dissolve right as it was coming true, right as everything was, you know, actually happening, uh, it was it, it just put an unequivocal dent in the morale of their followers. Like, all of a sudden, they've gone from being 100% leading the charge, yes, we love this, to just, oh, you know, w- w- does that mean the prophecy isn't true? Does that mean your interpretation of the prophecy isn't true? What, you know, d- do you not have the political power to maintain these sorts of things? Um, and it started to cast this shadow of a doubt in their followers as to whether or not they'd actually be able to achieve everything that they'd been saying they could. So, because the faction had relied on this religion and this myth, it really sort of forced the leaders into having to make a choice, right? They had to choose between, do we reinterpret this very dogmatic view of the prophecy, this one that we've been espousing for so long, the one that we've been preaching and proselytizing to everyone for the last, you know, 100 years or whatever... Do we really reinterpret that and sort of look like we're flip-flopping? Would that look like weakness? Or do we take control of that fate and hold to account those that have shifted the prophecy, those that have, you know, got in the way? And obviously they chose the latter, more aggressive action. And um, that's that's where we're going to leave this one, I think. (laughs) Because what happens next is the jihad and uh we we do we 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 don't have the time to deal with that in this video so um that's that's word of blake and how they sort of you know politically lead up to this jihad this, that's that's what what motivates them to to get involved um so thank you for listening um and again if there's anything you think i've missed anything you want more details on put it in the message and uh you know we'll in the you know in the chat box down there and and we'll get to that as soon as we get to it on the list i'm getting quite an extensive list and as you can see i'm trying to do my best to, to catch up with them so thank you very much for uh for following along and listening i hope this hasn't been too boring i'll see you in the next video we, we will find out more about the jihad and uh how how that came about so here we go